Cancer has continued to take lives because many people do not know the important facts and signs indicating that they have cancer. Experts say survival rate can be high if it is spotted early, but sometimes one is frustrated at the actions of cancer even when diagnosed early and attacked with latest treatment it still has the power to kill what makes cancer one of the most difficult diseases to treat. And of course, World Cancer Day is just around the corner, and the state government has launched Kebi Cancer Indigent Fund. What is this fund about? How do cancer patients have access to these funds? And what kind of cancer are we talking about? To discuss this and many more, let me introduce the Honorable Commissioner, Minister of Health and Chairman, State Tax Force Committee on COVID-19 and Control, Honorable Jafar Muhammad. You are welcome to the program. Thank you. Sitting next to him is Dr. Muhammad Jamilu, State Cancer Desk Officer and Secretary, Cancer Steering Committee. You're welcome to Health Digest. Thank you. And of course, I have Shuaibu Muhammad, State Coordinator, Medicaid Cancer Foundation. You're welcome to Health Digest. Thank you for having me. Uh, gentlemen, you're both welcome. Now, cancer, Dr. Jamilu, is a well-known disease that has alarming consequences on the society as it is such a disease that is difficult to overcome, particularly when it has reached advanced stage. What do you have to say about cancer generally? Well, generally, what we, uh, when we talk about cancer, we're talking about a disease that affects all parts of the body. Cancer can affect from head to toe. So it's a disease that when it catches or when it's affecting one part of the body, that part rapidly becomes uh, swollen and uh, the devastating effect that it has on other parts of the body, not just the organ that it is affecting, also some parts of the body will also get affected. Because just like normal cells, yeah. cancer cells also get blood supply which comes from the heart. It means the blood that goes into the cancer cells is the same blood that goes around the body to go to other uh, organs or tissues that don't have cancer. So that way cancer spreads throughout the body but if it is uh, attacked early yeah. like you introduced earlier then we arrest that spread through blood or through lymph or through other means that is uh, there so it is called localized cancer or cancer in situ when that time is there the cancer is uh, treated early we get a very good prognosis or we get uh, survival rate is high now some are saying Okay, when they have cancer, they don't want to go to the hospital because it is even a waste of time. Even when diagnosed early, it can still it still has the power to kill. Yes. Well, uh, if you don't go to the hospital, if you have cancer... So how early are we talking about? When we say early, we means we, there are things we call precancerous lesions, signs that cancer is about to set in. Yeah. For instance, now, some people don't even wait for those symptoms to occur. Yeah. Like if you have family history of breast cancer yeah. or cervical cancer, yeah. it is uh, normal for you to go to the hospital mm. without any symptoms to get screened. Mm. But if we are talking about early diagnosis, we mm. mean if you get to the hospital, you get screened and they pick uh, viruses that are causing cancer. For instance, the HPV virus that causes uh, cervical cancer. Mm. Do we have treatment for that? We either do cold coagulation or we do the um, excision. Treatment is available. Yeah. Like for breast cancer, if you have a breast lump, yeah. that lump is taken early and is diagnosed as cancer, you can take out that breast and the patient's survival rate becomes uh, very, very good because there are drugs and modalities to treat early stage uh, cancers. Unlike people that have come with advanced stages, like I told you, it spreads to the body. If it's already spread, we call it uh, metastasis. Metastasis cancer is a uh, cancer that has already uh, eaten all the body and all you need to do is palliative treatment, not looking at treating the patient to cure him per se. Okay. Yes. All right. uh, Honorable Commissioner, uh, the state government has launched KB Cancer Indigent Fund and looking at it from this angle that cancer treatment are quite a bit expensive. Why is the reason for this? Yes. One of the reasons of uh, Senator Achiku Wagudu led government is to bring healthcare services to the doors of the people, to alleviate the suffering of the people in terms of diseases. So in that initiative, uh, His Excellency, you know, approved uh, an indigent fund uh, as a take-up. And we saw tremendous 
uh, uh, improvement and support to cancer patients, where initially 63 uh, people benefited okay. when he first gave 10 million naira as a support wow. for that indigent fund. Wow. So when he saw the advantage and equally the support is yes. reaching to the people, yes. he later equally uh, 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 approved another fund of 20 million naira so that we will now be able to uh, enhance you know, the coverage. So in so doing, we equally entered into partnership okay. with reputable organizations okay. like Roche Nigeria, like Johnson & Johnson Limited, where in the area of partnership with the Roche, they are handling the area of breast cancer, okay. while in the area of uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson, yes. they are handling prostate cancer. I see. While we equally engage into partnership with uh, CHAI, that is Clinton Health Access and equally WHO with Medicaid Cancer Foundation where they are supporting us in cervical cancer. So in total, the KB State Government through the Indigent Fund is able to presently yes. treat about 300 people, wow. supporting them 300. in 300. Okay. So about 205 yeah. eligible women were treated. Okay and 85 men were treated and equally seven children were treated wow. so that's how they get support within the kb state government effort you know through the partnership with medicaid cancer foundation where we make a lot of sensitization we make a lot of enlightenment you know in order to key in people to come on board so that they can be screened if they are screened they are now identified when they are identified they will be enrolled when they are enrolled, they will undergo uh, uh, evaluation okay. of various investigations okay. so that when we do that, okay. we now support that patient. We have a state-of-the-art chemotherapy center within our KB Medical Center, Kalugo. Okay. And in that center, yes. you know, the state government uh, uh, employed the services of radio-oncology, who is a resident. Okay. in that center okay. who 24 hours he is He's within there. the hospital yeah. to give services we equally have equally uh, a visiting consultant from fmc who is she is equally a radio oncologist okay. and then we have a psychology clinical psychologist who is equally there on in the center and we have various consultants you know be it uh, our, our consultant uh, osteopathic and gynecology, you know, medicine, you know, that are in the center. All is to give services to improve, you know, this, uh, the condition of the patient. And where we don't have, uh, just like uh, 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 radiotherapy, yeah. we send that patient to uh, Osman Amfoy Teaching Hospital okay. or uh, Teaching Hospital Ibadan, you know, and they are about. Right. So that's how the relationship is, and that is how the indigent fund touched the life of the people of Kebi. Okay. Yes. Uh, Shoaibu, Medicaid Cancer Foundation is associated with the fight against cancer. What kind of cancer do you fight? Well, no, uh, thank you for having me. Mostly, we tend to focus our attention in creating sensitization and awareness okay. with regards to breast cancer. Okay. But we also generally sensitize people about the dangers of cancer. Okay. So in most instances, what we do, and it has been rightly mentioned, yeah. awareness is key okay. in treating of cancer. Okay. The earlier cancer is detected, the better. The better. That is why most of our advocacy, mm -hmm. advocacy campaigns yes. are mostly related to making people aware, screening, making sure that they carry out screening in good time, making sure that they um, desist from seeking traditional methods of healing with regards to cancer, even because of the nature of um, the cost of treatment. Okay. You'll find that people normally just... Uh, relate to just go back to their villages and try to seek uh, traditional means of treatment. See. That is why we are so grateful to the state government, which has uh, made tremendous efforts in providing care for most of these patients. Okay. So, mm. Now, why do you choose to fight cancer? Has it been identified as a leading health problem in Africa, Nigeria, Kebbi State, or world over? World over, world over, because as it is now, statistically, you will find out that uh, the rate of uh, breast and cervical cancer occurrences in 
sub-Saharan Africa has been on a very high uh, growth rate right now. You'll find out that most, well, a lot of women have been diagnosed with this illness and uh, seeking to lack of uh, knowledge. Yeah. Basically, these are some of the things that led Her Excellency mm -hmm. Dr. Jane Zainab Shinkafe Bagudu to create this foundation. Because as a medical professional pediatrician, she found out that a lot of women were coming to her with these challenges. That, why, that was why basically more than 10 years ago this foundation was created to cater for women that are going through these challenges of breast and cervical cancer. Uh, Dr. Jamilu, medically, cancer is said to be a long aging disease. Have experts developed outward cure to cancer disease? Well, like uh, you just said, cancer has been a disease that has been with us since uh, time immemorial. But to say that there is a cure which has been developed, I can tell you every part of the body can have cancer. Yeah. Some cancers, if you get them early, yeah. like this uh, breast cancer or cervical cancer, yeah. Somebody can get cure. Medically, when we say mm. cure, we mean if you are cancer free, maybe for mm. a period of five years and above, they will test the cells and they don't find any cancer cells and the survival rate. But to say for breast cancer, this is the cure for it, it's never happened. Okay. What is there is we do vaccination, for instance, mm. for uh, human papilloma virus, for okay. cervical cancer. That one is prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. If you, if a woman or a girl takes that vaccine, it is known that she hardly or she will never get come down with cervical cancer. But some cancers are hereditary, like the breast cancer. If the gene is there in the family, there's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. Probably someone is going to come down mm -hmm. with that cancer in that family. So, so the prostate because it has to do with, apart from family history, mm -hmm. it has to do with also genetic makeup of that individual. So there is no outright cure to cancer per se. So this cancer has this cure, mm -hmm. that cure. Okay. Honorable Commissioner, patients of cancer mostly are in their need. Does the fund cater for everything or it is a 50-50 affair? Well, so like you said, the cancer treatment is very expensive. Uh, and to a very large extent, that is why we have brought the facilities here within us in KB Medical Center. Initially, when we started, all our patients are sent outside. But now, they are here accessing services at a subsidized, uh, at, uh, at free. Okay. All the services that are, 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 is free, okay. as far as uh, KB State uh, uh, Cancer Control is concerned. But definitely, you know, in the management, there are some other auxiliary issues that they may like when they are at home. Probably they must uh, use. But so long as we have admitted the patient here, you know, we cut her, he, we cut her for his welfare free, for his well-being and all the drugs, the investigations, and equally the treatment are free. The state government has procured uh, drugs, you know, in the area of cervical cancer, in the area of breast cancer, cervical cancer, and equally the prostate cancer, so that we will continue to treat the patients that have come for evaluation within the center. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, now, Dr. Jamilu, um, World Cancer Day celebration, what is it all about? What does it entail? Well, just like any other day for uh, the World Health Organization has marked 4th of February to be World Cancer Day. That day is to identify with cancer patients okay. that we know the sufferings they are going through. We would like to create more awareness to people who are not living with cancer to make sure that those people get to the hospitals and get screened so that once you detect them early, yeah. help is also there for them. Okay. Not just to detect people and just leave them. Yes. If we do the screening yes. and we find out that you have a problem, mm -hmm. we have management for that. Okay. So that's what cancer is all about. Okay. You go out there, you mm -hmm. uh, pronounce it, you make other people know mm -hmm. that there are people living with cancer mm -hmm. and also them that don't have cancer, there are ways they can pro, uh, prevent uh, them okay. service having uh, to come down with cancer okay. diseases. Okay. If you just joined us, this is Health Digest. We are reaching you live from our studio in Brennan Kebi, the state capital. And it's about that time we open our telephone line for you to participate in the program. It's either you call or you send us an SMS. The number to do that is 80 69 80 69 11 82 32. Uh, Shuaibu. Mm. Activities lined up to celebrate this year's World Cancer Day in Kebi. What are the activities you lined up? 
Well, there are a series of activities that have been lined up uh, to celebrate this year's World Cancer Day. As a matter of fact, most of these activities are already we've already started. Um, for example, there was a cervical breast and cervical cancer screening that was carried out some few a uh, few days ago. Okay. Yeah, at Primary Healthcare Centre in Badaria. Okay. Yes, and beside that, we intend to also support cancer patients with what we term as the orange box. Okay. Yes, this box is basically meant as a token of um, support from Medicaid Cancer Foundation. Okay. Which will, which in it we have some level of gifts, and because of the nature of the disease, we also provide financial support. Like it was rightly mentioned, uh, treatment of uh, cancer is a very expensive and challenging uh, issue for families that are facing this ailment. Yeah. So that was that is why we believe uh, supporting patients financially is also um, a very instrumental way of uh, uh, providing care. So also navigating patients. Okay. You there are instances where my patients actually know what to do. They know, but they really don't know where to or who to contact. So we also provide these services in terms of channeling these patients in the in the right direction, okay. so that they can access uh, this healthcare that they are seeking. All right. I have a text message here, uh, Honourable Commissioner. My name is uh, Abdul Malik. How can a cancer patient have access to this cancer fund, and at what level of cancer should we be expecting this assistance? Uh, you see, we have <coughs> cancer registry in Sayahaya and KB Medical Center, Kalgo. So when you come to KB Medical Center, Kalgo, you will go to the cancer registry. You will now be able to register yourself. We will do all the documentation. Okay. And then the uh, 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 radio oncologist doctor will be able to review you, evaluate you, and then send you for uh, diagnosis, treat, uh, uh, investigation. And when he send you for investigation, then from the investigation you will be evaluated, you know, result will come out. When you are positive to uh, uh, that investigation, then you will be enrolled. Okay. And when you are enrolled, you will be able to access the services free. Just like I told you, initially, when the indigent fund started, you know, we take our patient, you refer our patient to Usman Amfodio Teaching Hospital. Okay. But now, we have, the state government has provided the services within uh, uh, the KB Medical Center, Colgo. When I told you initially, okay. we, we have the state-of-the-art chemotherapy center yeah. where money has been expended, you know, to be able to make provision, you know, of uh, quality of service. That is why we have engaged in partnership with Roach Nigeria, where we were able to procure drugs that are very expensive to be able to treat the, with the patient free. So also Johnson & Johnson to be able to treat the prostate cancer free. And when you come and you, you are already enrolled, then you start taking medication. And consultation are free, medication are free, and the treatment are free. If perhaps you are admitted, you will be admitted into we have oncology ward there, where you will be managed properly. So all is free. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he sent another one again that, uh, I'm sorry to say this, we were in hospital, he didn't mention any hospital, but we were sent back home that the case is a hopeless case. The cancer case is a hopeless case. That was what they were told. The Each and every patient that goes in there, he must be taken care of with adequate uh, uh, line of treatment with adequate procedure that I have already mentioned, okay. you know. So there is no patient that will go there, he will not be uh, 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 reviewed, and equally he will not be touched, okay. you understand. And perhaps if he has a problem, probably he didn't go to KB Medical Center of Calgo, he should uh, be referred to KB Medical Center of Calgo, okay. where the chemotherapy center is there. Okay. Yes, he will, be get, he okay. will get attention. All right. Yes, in, in addition to that yes. also, you know, like we said, there, is a, there are stages of cancer. Mm. If, for instance, the patient they have taken is in the maybe uh, stage that it has metastasized, nobody is going to tell him it's a hopeless case. Okay. Because cancer treatment is not just only giving drugs or giving injections. There's what we call, like the Honorable Commissioner rightly said, we have a clinical psychologist. He is the one to uh, calm those patients down 
and tell them things that uh, they should be doing. And there's palliative care to that. Palliative care means is a care that we give to patients to ease their pain, cancer, because they go a lot, uh, through a lot of pain. So palliative care is there. Maybe what they do is, uh, you see, patients have a way of saying maybe this, my patient and this patient have the same condition. But why is this patient being treated and my own is not mm -hmm. being treated? So it depends on the physician, the level of engagement with the patient. Like this one is late stage cancer and this one is early stage. But for you it's palliative care and for this one is going to go for surgery or for chemotherapy. So right. probably that's what has... He has sent another message again okay. that he has, he has not been to Calgo Medical Center. But now with this explanation he has understood. Mm -hmm. That was what he said. Uh, uh, now we have cancer of the skin, colon cancer, prostate, blood, breast, cervical, women. Why up to date, Dr. Milu, we are yet to have a breakthrough on this disease? Well, just like I told you, all the cells can get cancer. And some, it's hereditary. There's nothing you can do. For anything that is hereditary, you can't do anything about it. Okay. But for diseases that, like the skin cancer we're talking about, it usually occurs in people that have a melanin pigment deficiency, albinos. Okay. So if they get exposed to sunlight or ultraviolet rays, yes. get bumps to their skin, yes. ultimately turns into a melanoma or cancer of the skin. Okay. So also breast cancer, if you have a lump in the breast yeah. and it's not taken care of, you also have a strong family history of breast cancer, okay. you're bound to get breast cancer. Okay. So also cervical cancer, if you get HPV infection, you're bound to get down with, uh, so things are like that. Okay. Breakthrough for cancer treatment, up till today people are trying to get uh, cancer cure, but like I told you, some you can't just do anything about, but for Others that are gotten early, you get a very good uh, treatment, you get uh, cancer free, and you ultimately uh, declared uh, mm, cured. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, Shrabu, uh, Medicaid Cancer Foundation is collaborating with who in carrying out these screening exercises? Well, as you rightly mentioned, mostly our activities here in KB State that we are. Our our relationship is mostly mostly with the state government. Okay. Yes, and we through through them we've been able to reach all through the look look and cronies of the state to carry out our sensitization and uh, enlightenment campaigns. Okay. And um, as you were, as I was saying earlier, uh, this year's theme is close the gap okay. campaign, and we intend to reach out and uh, sensitize people all across the state. Um, we we have programmed uh, a walk which will carry out on the World Cancer Day. Okay. Yes, and we intend to also... But it's on the 4th of this month. On the 4th, yes. Okay. We intend to carry out a level of sensitization in communities around, uh, within and around the state capital. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Honorable Commissioner, is this a partnership between KB uh, State Minister of Health and uh, Medicaid Cancer Foundation in organizing this work you mentioned? Yes, it's in partnership with Medicaid Cancer Foundation uh, just to scale up, you know, uh, uh, service uh, awareness and equally to engage, you know, uh, uh, sensitization. Uh, like, we have partnership with Medicaid Cancer Foundation. We equally have uh, joint partnership, WHO and Clinton Access. And that partnership is for us to be able to screen 5,000 women for cervical cancer. But the state government, okay. you know, saw it magnanimously, yeah. you know, under the leadership of His Excellency, Senator okay. Abakar Achikubaguru, okay. scale, you know, the screening to 35,000. 35. The essence of wow. scaling the screening is for us to be able to have a statewide coverage yeah. and equally to be able to detect early when we detect early, then we treat, treat early. That is the whole idea, okay. so that we can reach with the people. Okay. That will give us a lot of information okay. on uh, the statistical data of the cancer within the KB state, okay. so that it will give us an informed decision, okay. so that we can be able to plan early, so that we can scale off you know, our, our budgetary provision. Mm -hmm. Presently, the KB state has already developed, you know, a, a, a bill that is going to be able to legitimize and equally 
have a legal backing, you know, in case of, in, in, in terms of cancer control, okay. so that we now be able to institutionalize it, okay. so that we can be able, because we understood cancer is among the leading diseases in the world. So therefore, we have to make provision for our people in order to be able to attack uh, the disease head on. Okay. Uh, now, when people are screened, my name is uh, Zule Hatu, when people are screened, especially female, what happens for those who are found to be positive? Yes. For those that are found to be positive for any screening for cancer, what we usually tell them is uh, they go to the hospital. If to say the screening is done maybe elsewhere, yeah. you go to the hospital at your own convenience, whichever hospital you go to, because yeah. all the health facilities are being covered with some referral centers. So for positive cases of cancer, what we do is we register you first okay. that you have been diagnosed okay. with that disease. Okay. Then we now send you to primary physician. Primary okay. physician we call, if it is surgical case, we send you to surgery. Okay. If it is O and G, obstetric and gynecology, yes. we send you whichever department is. Yeah. You go and see that physician, he evaluates you, and then he outlines the line of management. Okay. When he outlines the line of management, then you now bring back the discussion you had with the physician to the registry. The registry will now, according to what plan has the physician done for you, that is how the assistance will now come to you. Okay. In terms of either he said you are going to take medication, okay. or he's, you are going to have surgery, or you are going to have radiotherapy. Okay. So according to what the decision has made with you, that is how the support will come to you. Okay. But you'll have to see a physician first. first. Okay. Yes. Uh, Shuabu. The organization, Medicaid Cancer Foundation, screened women as part of activities of celebrating World Cancer Day. How many women have benefited from this gesture? With regards to screening? Yes. Yes, um, in total, we can see for the past few years, we screened more than a, a thousand women okay. within, within the state. Uh, within the state okay. Because we've, I believe we've covered almost all the local governments in the state. 21 local governments? Yes, state, and right. um, like uh, Doctor has rightly mentioned, all the positive cases are yes. rightly hand handed over to the Cable State Cancer Registry Department, okay. where they have been asked to go for further evaluation, okay. which is, um, I believe, histology. Okay. Once these, uh, they are properly confirmed as uh, cancer cases, yes. then they will be supported adequately. Uh, Adequately. Okay. Adequately. All right. yes. Now, this question says, um, My name is uh, Balkisu. Is Medicaid Cancer Foundation the only organization that is screening women for cancer in the state? As an organ a private organization? Yes. Naturally, well, as far as I know, my, my, uh, our, our foundation is uh, very active in screening women, and um, most of our co collaboration has been with. Uh, the state government and uh, WHO. Okay. If there are other organizations doing this, I'm really not aware of, but okay. uh, we are actively screening uh, women across the state. Okay. Just like I have rightly said, we have a joint partnership where we develop a memorandum of understanding with Medicaid Cancer Foundation, with WHO, with Clinton, Clinton Access, Health Access, yes. that is CHAI. And then we equally have partnership with Roche Limited, okay. so also Johnson and Johnson. Johnson. So in the partnership, it's not only Medicaid Cancer Foundation that we have, mm. that we are having partnership with that do screening. Okay. It's a joint partnership and we, it's a joint screening okay. that we normally do with all okay. these uh, uh, foundations and all these organizations. Okay. Yes. Right. Honorable Commissioner, why is KB State Government turning its focus on cancer? Uh, KB State Government is one of the uh, uh, government in the northern Nigeria, you know, that already developed cancer control plan. And at the same time, KB State government is one of the government that is giving cancer treatment free. Okay. In the free. whole Tatsia, yeah, cancer uh, uh, treatment free. Yeah. So the reason why KB State government has focused on cancer because it's one of the leading diseases in the world now. It is. And that, therefore, uh, because our people, you know, need to be supported. Because we realize that uh, uh, there are cancer patients around off here. So once we step in early, yes. we'll be able to make provision, you know, we'll be able to make the screening and detection early. 
So it means we will be able to alleviate our people from suffering from cancer. Because of the devastating effect of the cancer, so the state government saw it, let us come in early so that we can be able to support our people, you know. So that is one of the reasons. I remember very well, how do we even create awareness? So we have gone around all the four Emirates where we make massive sensitization and uh, awareness creation where we met our royal fathers and we get the royal blessing from mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the one of the outing, you know, Her Excellency even chaired, you know, the outing, you know, at uh, uh, the courtesy sensitization visit mm -hmm. at Yaouri Emirate, okay. where we make sensitization, we make high enlightenment, you know, and the reason why, because we want to key in, you know, people, you know, to partake, to do the screening so that they will know their status. Mm -hmm. When they know their status, they can be enrolled for treatment, you know, so that is the reason. Now that the state government has scaled up, you know, a uh, 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 screening to yeah. 35,000. You know, that sensitization is key. And I know it's going to, we are going to have a very good reflection. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Jamilu, yes. among all cancers we have been talking about, are there, have medical experts not gotten to a level of genetically guarding the society from this ravaging disease? Yes, from what the studies have shown, uh, scientists have been working tirelessly to see that maybe there is some uh, gene modification or some treatment that can influence uh, cancer disease. But you know, for everything to do with uh, cancer treatment or cancer control, there has to be understanding okay. of that disease. Okay. So to get the understanding, if, like I told you, keep on saying for anything genetic, yes. it means you don't have control over it. Because it's a mutation that will take place, okay. whether we like it or not. Okay. But for other cancers, that's why they have developed other methods of halting or stopping the spread okay. of the disease. And it is reasonable for any government to look into cancer. Because when cancer catches somebody in the family, it is it involves everybody. It is. No matter how rich you are, okay. if cancer catches you, it means you're going to be economically down. It breaks down marriages and things like that. Like uh, what other people are saying, if you come to the hospital, you see a woman with cervical cancer. She's so looking so wretched, so and uh, you, it's it's a pitiful sight, you, you know. And she doesn't have the kind of money to go and get adequate treatment. So that is why this awareness, this everything is going on to make them aware that if you get that in early, you don't have to suffer. And get and the thing is, if you get it early, it means even if you are going to support yourself, the amount of money you are going to spend in treatment is going to be very less compared to when it is advanced, when everybody has to suffer. For instance, now if you have breast cancer that is advanced, unlike people that have small lumps that you just go for direct surgery, you'll have to go for chemotherapy first, okay. then come back for surgery, okay. then go back for chemotherapy. Unlike other patients that will have just surgery and one round of chemo. So you see the economic cost becomes more and more as when you don't go to the hospital or when you don't uh, screen and see that you have that cancer early. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes, even the cost of the injections is not easy because okay. if you are supporting yourself yes. and you have to buy those injections, including the investigations, you have to spend each cycle at least 60 to 70,000 naira. And you'll have to do six of those cycles. So treatment of cancer naturally is expensive. It's expensive. This is just the beginning. Doctors of the surgery, they will have to go for radiotherapy where you have to spend millions of naira. Thank God. But thank God to the state government, His Excellency has graciously approved. Like with the partnership with Roach, we have a septin drug, which a vial costs almost four hundred thousand. Which patients our patients get free of charge. Free in Kebbi. Whichever hospital they want to go to and get that drug. It's free. Yeah. So also the Zatiga that is Johnson and Johnson bringing, uh, one um, uh, vial of that or one ampoule causes almost two hundred thousand. What? Which if we tell the patients and we have hundred for a hundred patients and more are coming. So if we, it's not just the indigent fund that is uh, supporting. Apart from indigent fund, if we see the commitment of the patient, the level of care, then you go further. If you go to Abuja, you don't have to. So, uh, spend so much money. 
That has a team comes in 18 cycles. So you can imagine if you to spend 400,000 times 18. Well, well, well. You it's see? Allowed. So it's, it doesn't stop just at Calgo. The indigent fund uh, raises Calgo, and then when you go further and you are interested in the treatment, then the state, the state also continues to support. That is how we see it. And this one is only applicable to KB State? KB Indigenous. Mm -hmm. yes. people that fund. are residing in KB, yes. One more message, Philip, before we go. Uh, why is cancer so common in poor people? Is it, a, is, is it poor people's disease? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's not true. It's not a poor, a poor people's disease. Everybody gets cancer. But the tendency for poor people to come to hospital is less. Because, you know, of traditional beliefs, because of religious beliefs, yeah. people in the villages tend to go to other means of uh, cure before yeah. they finally come to the hospital. Yeah. All the people that have uh, money or they are rich, they know that they have to go to the hospital and get cured. Okay. Or it's for everybody, it's not just for man's disease. All right. Honorable Commissioner, from 5,000 to 35,000, how do you intend to do this? Yeah. Just like I told you, uh, we initially have 10 centers okay. to cover, you know, for the 5,000 5, under the joint partnership. Okay. But with uh, the state government scale it up for uh, the whole state to cover the whole state so that we can be able to cover 35,000 with a view to be able to detect early, like I have said, and we have already created awareness and we will continue to create awareness and sensitization so that we can have more enrollment. Okay. So that is the essence. And the state government has made adequate arrangement, you know, for us to be able to have an elevening environment so that we can be able to do all this screening. Uh, just like you have rightly said, that is the essence of the partnership. Okay. The partnership bring about all the commodities that we need okay. and the state government key in and procure all those commodities. Okay. The commodities are being used in delivering this service. Okay. Just like you have said, you know, uh, how Zetiga is about 200 and the other as a thing at 400, you know. And you have to get a range of cycles. So that is the advantage, you know, of the control plan of the KB state government to touch the life of the people, you know, to alleviate, you know, the expensive nature of the treatment, you know, to bring it down to the people. Uh, Shwebu, before we go, how long do we have in celebrating this day? Well, the is is ongoing, okay. but uh, basically the day has been marked for the fourth of February every year, okay. and um, we intend to start. We've already started celebrating and marking the day, okay. but we will be around on the fourth and on the fifth, okay. inshallah. Right. Doctor Jamilu, before we go, there are, there could be some preventive measures against yes. cancer. What are these measures? Yes, preventive measures like you don't smoke to get uh, lung cancer. Okay. You don't expose to sun if you are uh, having melanin pigment diseases. Then other things that cause cancer, you get uh, vaccinated against mm -hmm. HPV. Yeah. If you have any breast lump, you yeah. get checked. If you have family history of cancer, you get screened early. Mm -hmm. This, if you keep, uh, definitely, even if the cancer gets to you, you can get cured. Honorable state, Commissioner, uh, in one minute, your final word to people of the state to key in into these programs that go state government has provided. So I want to appeal the people of KB State and residents that uh, there is uh, opportunity for people to know their statute and equally to key in within the council control of KB State. So I'm appealing to people to be able to come in in mass, to be able to be screened. I'm soliciting for the uh, traditional rulers, religious uh, rulers to be able to continue to sensitize. Most of the time we normally get support from the traditional rulers and religious uh, ruler, uh, leaders, leaders right. in key in people to be able to understand, you know, to come in to get the services and the services are free. All right. That was the Honorable Commissioner, State Minister of Health, and of course, Dr. Jamilu from the Cancer Registry and Medicaid Cancer Foundation, Shuaibu Muhammad. We are only talking about cancer, so make yourself available for this screening. It is very important. The state government is spending a huge sums of money for the downtrodden. We'll see you again same time next week, same station. Until then, please do take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.